And we start the day with another agricultural report from the rural parts of the nation. <laughs> Fencing being done in the uh, in the middle of the North Island, and uh, down here we're all we're all praying for for warmer weather and uh, and a bit of moisture to make the grass grow because there ain't much. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope your days have started well um, today, and thanks for joining us. Um, a bit of a cool start down down in this part of the world, so it was uh, depends which weather forecast you believe, minus one or minus two, felt like minus four or something, so a bit chilly, but there you go, that's this time of year. You okay up there, Frank, with the weather? Yep, pretty good. We're off to the field days tomorrow, so uh, we're going make sure I attack the National Party um, tent. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you no longer have to keep your checkbook in your pocket. It's just your, your visa card, is it? <laughs> no buying new tractors. <laughs> no, I go there and come back with spending nothing. <laughs> I would have done years ago, but not these days. Yeah. All right, let's um let's kick into the to what we've got on offer for today, and so uh, Frank, you've got something out of the uh, press from Veterans Affairs and Minister Pink and so on from last week. Yeah, well, it was just uh, recently released last week that uh, by Minister Chris Pink that um, he announced an additional four million to go towards Veterans Affairs over the next four years. When you look at it, really, that's one million a year, which ain't very much. No. Um, and the funding is actually stated that the funding is to be, um, or a large part of the money, is to be used for speeding up the processing of applications for treatment and rehab. Oh. Um, I like the part here where he states, um, New Zealand veterans have sacrificed a lot for this country, and when they need our support, they deserve the best possible level of support. Well, I hope this does go a bit of the way to getting the backlog sorted out. Having a backlog of around about a year, uh, to me, is not satisfactory. And um, I thank Chris Pink for that. And they're working with the RSA as well. Um, so we'll see what the outcome is. The uh, Veterans Independence Program, of course, is suspended until March. Um, I don't know if he was hinting here that it may be able to be brought forward, uh, reopening it, but we'll see. Yeah, and I think the um, there was some comment from Veterans Affairs that they're reducing the upper age limit from 90 right, down, down to 80. Correct, yeah, down to 80, uh, or you have a terminal illness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it probably would have been better to have dropped it down to about 60, I think. <laughs> Never mind. I suppose uh, beggars can't be choosers. Well, that's right, and I think the um, the interesting thing was at the um, the last coffee day here in Wigram, where Bernadine McKenzie and um, Mike O'Reilly, the the medical guy, were present. I had a had a chat with um, with Bernadine about some some issues, and I asked her about the. Um, the queues around the VIP program and said, look, you know, down here in Christchurch, we, the, the RSA is quite keen to um, to get someone, a veteran, get them into, into a business, go around and cut a few hedges and mow a few lawns, clean a few windows, that sort of thing. So it's a bit circular, veterans looking after veterans. You know, we'd like to help the, help the guy get started, blah, blah, blah. And um, I said, "Do you have a list of those who who are on that um, on the waiting list that you've cut?" Oh no, she said, "We've we've thrown all those documents away." So the good news is that <laughs> um, if you were in the list and you have to reapply, so prior experience would tell us that um, there's going to be another list, there's going to be another wait. So even though the doors may open for new applications in March, you may still be waiting until the end of the year before they're processed um, so that you get the service. But then again, you know, it's only the 80 to 19 year old, 80 to 80 plus 
um, and if you've got a terminal illness. So let's wait and see what happens. We won't um, cane them too much until March rolls around and we see where we're going. But we have to, yeah. uh, I guess, take our hats off. They've got a bit of, bit of funding to help ease the burden for those who are looking for um, compensation for uh, illness and injury suffered on their service. So let's see what happens there. Yeah, well, when we did our survey about the Veterans Affairs or those who were waiting or had the applications in, we only had four replies. So I yeah. there can't be that many. And I think they've tightened it up a little bit too because now they're saying that the um, the injury or illness that precludes you from windows, mowing, lawns, gardening, etc., has to be service-related in some way. Um, so I don't know how how elastic that concept is, but we'll wait and see when, when the new apl applications roll in. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> And the other thing that was in the news, which I thought was quite interesting, and this is a little bit um, not so much particular to us as older former service people, but maybe some of the younger younger people, the um, Australian Defence Force, happy to start recruiting Kiwis, <laughs> Yanks and, um, and the Palms to build their numbers up. And I would suspect that the, uh, the pay, um, the opportunities... Uh, certainly for exercising your skills in a, um, in a shall we say, war-type setting um, might be enlarged greater than they would be if you stayed here in New Zealand. And even though we're scraping at the moment to muster troops, we might um, face next year um, even even harder job to get the numbers mustered up to get the, the Navy out or the planes in the sky or troops on the ground in parts of the Pacific to help with um, might be some civil defence kind of emergency or whatever so let's uh, also keep a, an eye on that the um, the numbers that the uh, that they were quoted I think it was Judith Collins was saying that the those leaving NZ defence had um had reduced from 15% to 7% or something like that. Let's wait and see if there's a bubble with this uh, <laughs> <laughs> this move by our neighbours on the West Island trying to recruit our, <laughs> our young people across to serve them. But, uh, hey, yeah. look, I would say in your, if I was young enough, I'd be putting my hand up and go, yeah. going over. It's like, yeah, why not? There yeah, there's no waiting, no waiting time that for the Kiwis either. Yeah, plus citizenship after, what is it, 90 days or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So it's not a bad package if you're um, if you're currently serving and you're looking at, um, Jesus, life's a bit hard here. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel every week for, for a few coins to put food on the table. Um, yeah. It might be a different story if you go to Australia. So, Well, where would you rather be, Burnham or Puckapungal? <laughs> <laughs> or in the far north territories up there, it's a bit warmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They got some beautiful big camps up there, right up north. Yeah. So there you go, folks. That's that's uh, all the news that is the kind of news for today. I think the um, I've had a reminder from Morris that the twenty seventh of July, Birkenhead RSA is the um, is our AGM. So if you can make that, that'll be great. Um, we intend having it online as well, so you can attend that way. Um, which we'll see how how effective that is. And um, I think also next week, 18th and 19th, I think it is, in Gisborne, is the, um, oh, I'm just playing around here, I'm lost on my computer. Oh, here we go, found it. Um, <clears throat> I think that's in Gisborne as the um, Veterans Affairs will be there. So you need to register for the case management um, clinic. So give that a buzz if you live in that area. So, crossing the bar, Frank. Right. Well, I've got four today. I thought it was five, but I reread it. Starting off with Foxtrot 21004, Vander Wettering, John Martin Peter, commonly known as Wets, Royal New Zealand Navy, was a mechanical engineer, Crossed the bar on the 30th of May 2024. 
At Peter's request, a private cremation has been held. NZ13421, Monk, David Jeffrey, Abel Seaman Gunner, joined 9 bar 50, crossed the bar, surrounded by his loving family on May the 28th of uh, 2024. A service for uh, David has been held, followed by a private cremation. NZ15066, Orson, Eric Keith, Royal New Zealand Navy, Radio Operator Second Class, Malayan Emergency, Suez Crisis, Operation Grapple and uh, on the Rotowiti, and a member of the Far East Strategic Reserve, passed away June or crossed the bar June the 5th, 2024. Um, there will be a celebration to um, celebrate his life. Um, it was yesterday, followed by a private cremation. NZ 18128, Simonson Terry, Royal New Zealand Navy Mechanical Engineer, crossed the bar on the 4th of June 2024. No further details are available. Please convey our condolences to the families and friends of those sailors. So we've only had one from the uh, from the army this week. Kilo three zero six nine one. Lieutenant Colonel retired Pilling P I W L I N G Lawrence H known as Laurie M B E. New Zealand Regiment and RNZIR, called time in Hamilton on the 1st of June, 2024, aged 83. He enlisted in the New Zealand Army as a Staff Cadet in January 1958 and graduated from the um, Military College in Duntroon in December 61. He was posted to Charlie Company 1NZ Regiment as a platoon commander in 1962, and he stayed on with the 63-65 uh, Battalion until May 64. He served in one NZATTV in Vietnam in 1970-71 as a major and was later the camp commandant of Papakura Camp in the mid-70s before taking his release. So we, um, <clears throat> to those who passed, we thank you for your service and we offer our condolences to the families and we also offer our support if we can be of any support um, in the follow-up from um, dealing with Veterans Affairs, maybe the RSA, something like that. Give us a call or give someone that you know within those organisations a call um, if you need some support. That's about us, Frank, short and sweet. Right. It is short and sweet, yep. It's pretty good. Okay. Can now go and check that the fence is in a straight line. I've been looking out the corner here trying to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be at the same place, the same time uh, next week. And um, if you need something or need us to talk about something for you or you have uh, some queries or questions, comment underneath the uh, the Facebook posting and we'll get to them and uh, and respond as quickly as we can. I think that's about us for today, Frank. Thanks for your yep. attention. Thank and you, Dave. I look forward to seeing the next vessel behind you next week. Right, yes, I'll find one. They're not <laughs> they're all at sea. <laughs> they're all at sea. They can't be the modern ones. I think they're all tied up, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, well, I'll see you on Thursday. Okay, cheers, folks. We'll catch you next week. All right.